Thanks everyone for joining us for day two of Monai Days. My name is Michael Zephyr and I am on the Monai Advisory Board and lead the Monai Outreach and Adoption Working Group. And I also work at NVIDIA working on Monai as well. Um, for those of you who weren't with us yesterday, we had a day one of Monai Days that was focused more on the real-time computer-assisted uh, focus day on Holoscan. The recordings for that will be up next week sometime. So if you missed the sessions that were there, feel free to check them out. We'll have them up on the Monai YouTube. Um, and for today, we have a pretty packed agenda. So I'm going to kick us off with an overview of Monai and an introduction for everything that's going to happen today. Then we're going to pass it off for our keynote speaker, which is Annika. Um, after that, we have Ali talking about non-human anatomical segmentation. Benjamin from KCL talking about uh, geometry and pixel data integration that just happened recently in Monai Core. We'll take a small coffee break. Uh, then we'll go over to some more model focuses, which is Vista 3D is one of the foundation models that was released earlier this year. We'll have a presentation on that. A model called Macy, which is for synthetic CT generation. A model called Vista 2D for cell imaging segmentation and a new effort that we have around Monai multimodal and VLMs. And so we'll be presenting our first effort at a Monai uh, medical imaging based VLM at the end of the day. Um, and then some closing remarks. We've had some changes overall about how our advisory board works, how our working groups work, and how we can contribute back to the community if you're interested in doing that. So I'll go ahead and close us off with a recap of everything that's happened over the last year. Um, and close us out and just thank everyone for, for being here for the day. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, so open science is really important for making sure that we have things like reproducibility and is really important for why deep learning is succeeding. And two of those reasons, again, right here, one is performance and then the other is open science. And some of the key pieces of this is things like Archive or TCIA, IDC, um, a DICOM, FIRE, different open access data types and areas where you can go get data. We have the medical decathlon uh, data set within Monai, and we have access to that as a wrapper, so you can easily get started with data in case you don't have data, in case you want to play around with it. We have wrappers to TCIA as well. Um, some of those are hosted on Amazon's open data uh, effort or directly on TCIA or a number of other places that we have wrappers for. And that's really important for being able to get the message around Monai and generally open science out there into the community. We want this to be open and free for everyone and to be able to have access to the latest and greatest in medical imaging and for you to be able to come to the same place for being able to get access to algorithms, data, publications, uh, and anything else around medical imaging. And so we want to be part of that community. So why is Monai needed? Um, above and beyond things like PyTorch, we have medical imaging deep learning requires specialized tools. So medical IO needs things like DICOM and Nifty readers. You have medical specific viewers. You have spe medical specific transformations, whether that's for voxel or HU or intensity or any, any other things you might want to normalize on. We also have specific network architectures versus 2D, 3D, and 4D, depending on what you're working on. If you're more on the microscopy pathology side, if you're more on the MRI CT side, or if you're more on sort of time series side of things, or a, a lot of other types of uh, modalities within medical imaging require multiple sets of networks that may not be directly in something like PyTorch. And so we wanted to have that available for people to be able to do a lot of these different features that are required within medical imaging. And some of the focuses that we have now, especially are on things like reconstruction and registration moving forward as well. And another big thing is just the, the challenges that we face in the amount of data, the amount of public data that's out there that is medical specific. How do we utilize that to the best of our ability? I mentioned that we do have some of that open data, which is fantastic for getting this started. Um, but then that still has some limit not be quite suited for your particular task. And so trying to make sure that we have things that can help you when you do get started with your data, even if you can't try it out on some more public data. 
And, and then things like annotation and certainties. How much? Uh, how many times do you have something annotated and validated? How is that? Uh, is it consistent between annotators? And what does that look like for a particular data set? And how do you deal with those uncertainties? And then just generally reproducibility. Uh, we want to make sure that all these things that are uh, we're doing are in open source so that you can go through, look at the source code, use a Jupyter notebook, have a paper that references it, and go back, read the paper, come back to the source code, and go ahead and use it in Monai. So I've talked a little bit about open science and some about Monai, but what is Project Monai? And so the goal that we set when we started back in 2019 was to accelerate the pace of research and development by providing a common software foundation and a vibrant community for medical imaging deep learning. And that's kind of what I was touching on a few slides ago. We really want it to be a place where there's this common place where people can go through and put transformations, network architectures, metrics, any other number of tools that they might want to develop and how do we become sort of the medical AI hub for things people are doing in the medical AI field? And Monai's design goals are hopefully to make it as easy as possible for people to get started. So if you have not used Monai yet, um, the idea is you can come in and customize it as much as you want. You can go into the source code, you can use it and modify it to your, to your liking. It's also composable, which means if you're already working in PyTorch, then you're already working in Monai. A lot of the things are backwards compatible. If you want to use a single transformation or a network, that usually works and that works pretty fine. So if you're already doing that, you have a pretty seamless workflow to get back into to get into using Monai. If you're using something like TensorFlow, you can get started with some of our tutorials and move over to PyTorch and be in the Monai ecosystem on the PyTorch side of things pretty easily as well. I already mentioned some of the domain specialized uh, work that we're already doing. The other thing is a lot of these things are GPU optimized, whether that's for single GPU or multi GPU or specific CUDA kernels that were written for making sure things stay on the GPU as long as possible to get the best performance out of running training and entrance for your model. Reproducibility, I talked about that a little bit already. And last is sort of high quality tutorials, videos, documentation, and events like this where we can go through and share some of the latest and greatest of what's happening in the Monai community. And that way you get a uh, first peek into what's happening there in case you don't keep track of it every day like we do and that way you can get a quick start or a jump start to using those uh, new things that are in Monai and we we strive to have both of the things that you see here we'll have a, a corresponding uh, tutorial when it's on the model side um, or the ge geometry data side for instance um, and so we have a repository uh, if you go to github called tutorials. So if you search for Project Monai tutorials, you'll find that repo and it has a 50 to 100 or more different tutorials in there for you to be able to get started on your particular task. So what is Monai? Um, we've talked about what it kind of provides you at a high level, but within Monai, there are a few different frameworks that we think about, starting with Monai Core, which is what we started with back in 2019. And it's really our deep learning training uh, workflow and, and framework. After that, we had Monai Label, and Monai Label is around AI assisted annotation. So when you have data that's unannotated, how did you go through and annotate that data? And if you have data that's already annotated and you want to maybe do corrections or even just have it in the viewer and play around with the models that are in there already to see the comparison, for instance, of the segmentations, how do you then do that in a seamless way into viewers that are readily accessible for in the medical community. So things like OHIF, uh, 3D Slicer, and just recently we had MIT, uh, MITK integration into Monai Label. Things like QPath and DSA for pathology, and things like CVAT for video annotation. And we have uh, hook-ins for all of those and plugins for that in Monai Label to be able to use that in your workflow. We have Monai Deploy that talks about the end-to-end -end clinical deployment. And this is more on sort of the, the batch uh, or real time, but not necessarily in the milliseconds range of real time, um, but relatively quickly deployment of how do you do that in a clinical setting? And how do you take that stuff you've developed from getting ground truth data to training your uh, model? And then you need a next step, which is how do you deploy it? And so you wrap this in a map and you can then have that in a Docker container that is reproducible that you can go through and anyone can run that. Um, and that's one sort of option for deployment. 
one of the other things that we talked about yesterday on day one was more on the Holoscan side of things. And so Holoscan is a little bit of a new addition that we are talking about. Um, previously, we had some efforts called Monai Stream, and a lot of the efforts around that ended up circling around Holoscan. And so we ended up using Holoscan as a base reference for that, as the sort of previous Monai Stream work that we did. And now that's moving over to Holoscan. And so Holoscan is more on that sort of computer-assisted intervention side of things, more on the, the real-time inference where you're thinking about milliseconds and 30, second, 30 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds does make a big difference for how quickly you're getting that AI results from a scope to a screen so that the procedure that's happening right there has the most accurate and real-time information. Hol uh, Monai Deploy, as of 0.6, is actually based off of Holoscan as a dependency. And so now we're kind of bringing that in to have both sides of things. So strictly real-time uh, on the Holoscan side and packaging and deployment there, and a similar operator workflow and app workflow on the Monai Deploy side that talks about sort of more end-to-end -end clinical deployment side of things. And again, this is kind of just to show the whole workflow of what I just talked about, but a little bit more in depth, which is first is just data. We have data everywhere. Maybe you have annotated data, maybe you don't. Maybe you're pulling things from medical, the medical decathlon data set or from TCIA, and you want to bring that into labeling or training, or you're just ready to pull in a app that is already available on our Monai model zoo, which I'll talk about in a second, use that to generate more data and then come back and train another model based off of that base model that you already have. And you also want to be able to package that and deploy that depending on whether that's sort of real time or you have a little bit more flexibility or sort of a more batchy kind of mode of things as well. And so wherever you're at in that workflow, we strive to hopefully help you along that journey from zero to one, two, three, or four. Our community has grown substantially over the last five years. So I mentioned we started back in 2019, so it was at Mikai 2019. And so this year we will be celebrating our five year anniversary of the start of Project Monai, which is fantastic. And it is because of all of you guys who are here and all of the community who's been involved that we've been able to have the success run these events and continue to contribute to the medical imaging community. So as of uh, I think a few days ago or yesterday, we have about 3.5 million plus downloads within Monai Core, around 70 plus thousand downloads in Monai Label, and around 33,000 in Monai Deploy, and around 250 to 300 plus individual contributors across multiple repos, and over 50 to 100 plus institutions who are now using Monai in their workflow. So I mentioned the model zoo earlier. The model zoo is somewhere where you can get jump started with pre-trained models that are available from the community. So we have things that are around CT, pathology, MRI, X-ray, and endoscopy. And we also have applications around segmentation, detection, classification, registration, and reconstruction. And so we have a number of contributors to the Monai model zoo that can help you get started. If you're interested in contributing your own model to Monai Model Zoo, you can also do that. Definitely reach out. We have a Monai Model Zoo repository. So if you go to Project Monai Organization on GitHub and you look for model-zoo, you'll find the Model Zoo repository there. And that's a great place to get engaged and figure out if you want to contribute your work to there uh, is fantastic and helps the community overall. And for people who are just wanting to get that jump start on testing things out, even if it's just getting your feet wet with Monai, that's also a great place to get started as well.